I feel like it's only fitting for today's episode that I put on my Praise the Sun t-shirt. Wait, you can't see it. Can you see it now? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome to another game review where today we are going to be discussing Elden Ring. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, find them. Safe, motivated, and created equal among the tarnished heroes that walk the lands between Elden Ring created by George R. R. Martin and Hidetaka Miyazaki bring to life a world of chaos, beauty, challenge, and growth. When playing Elden Ring, it was easy to see its direction and motivation, but as the story went on and as the story progressed, it became more complex in its motive and the message that I wanted to convey to its players. Your question here is what Elden Ring represents, but not just as a game, but as a subjective journey, since every playthrough is so vastly different for each person. So many different layers to gaming, and one of these layers in this game in particular is the Elden Beast. Now, the Elden Beast is kind of the spiritual primordial manifestation of a tarnished faith structure. F psychologically, it's absolutely fascinating where Marika and, you know, slash the Elden Beast has a strong hold on the tarnished, and basically every living being that can communicate with you in this game. So going in deeper into the story and what I perceived, in this game during my playthrough, the Elden Beast is the spiritual slash primordial manifestation of a tarnished faith. Psychologically, Medica slash the Elden Beast has a strong hold over the tarnished and well everything else that can communicate with you in the game. This game not only has our hero questioning their faith to the fingers, well, aka creation, uh, but they have the choice on how the world will burn and what endings are acquired. Picking your poison in this game creates your own narrative. A story for the ages, basically. Being a fighter for the ring, not to be confused for the WWE. And questioning your very beliefs puts you in a Hunger Games type situation, fighting for your wants and a new era to be ushered in, technically. As I progressed through this game, I had the same feeling exploring this game as I did when I explored Dark Souls 1 for the first time. I wasn't sure where I was headed, but it was exciting and it was a bit nerve wracking <laughs> to go through this journey. A psychology behind Elden Ring advanced as I explored each new territory. The psychology behind Elden Ring also uh, just advanced just dramatically as I progressed on throughout this entire game. Each area got a little more complex. Psychology, keep in mind, is kind of an enhanced version of Dark Souls 1, where originally you had a hollow trying to find the meaning of the world around them, and through their ending you would see either the world usher in the new age of man or it would still be subjected to the will of the bonfire just doing the same thing over and over and over again now in elden ring we not only have to find the meaning of the world around us but we have to understand our creation and become the new ruler of chaos or an indifference there is really no in between there are six endings in this game and with those six endings you go from just okay to a tiny bit better to really really bad like the, the ending that I got was the Age of Fracture, and then the worst ending that you can get is the uh, Frenzied Lord. So there really is no winning <laughs> with this. I feel like the worst ending the, of them all is Ronnie's ending, because you're putting somebody else in control and putting someone else in that power instead of having that power for yourself to maybe make the world a little bit better. You're ushering the Age of the Stars. So it, depending on how you look at it, the frenzied ending might be the worst. Ronnie's ending might be the worst. You, it's it's really it's a complex game. <laughs> Now, when diving into Elden Ring, I didn't quite realize how subjective this whole journey actually is. Um, with a cacophony of different themes, motifs, psychological and philosophical concepts, it felt like a playground to fully be mentally immersed in. Yes, you can look up as many guides and walkthroughs as you want, but really, this adventure is so subjective and unique to your own experience. Like, for me, I was a, uh, a mage faith build. Normally, I never go for those types of builds at all. Mostly, I'm a melee build, so that's actually what I am right now in Dark Souls 3. But for the first time ever, I went out of my comfort zone, and I went with the Astrologer class and ended up making a Mage Faith build, and I absolutely loved it. But the experience in this game is so 
vastly determined on your play style and the individual playing the game and some of the bosses are just completely weak <laughs> to magic you know you really have to have some heavy duty just like tr just fire armor <laughs> for some of these bosses i feel like a machine gun might work now some you really have to study the move sets for you know much like the elden beast it's really like sekiro in that all the moves are so different and unique. I really felt it with <laughs> the uh, the uh, the um, the Elden Beast because it has so much going on all at once that you have to stay so entirely focused. Unless you have like a really OP weapon, you really have to just be like, okay, this is gonna take a few tries, but we gotta get there. And the Elden Beast just out of nowhere tries to distract me with pretty galaxies. Nice try, Elden Beast. I see what your game is. Well, this game for me was extraordinarily easy in the first half. I mean, I was almost thinking of it as like, what, what's going on here? Did I just get good or what's happening here exactly? Um, the, the challenge came in the second half of the game where it was, I, I don't even have words for the, the Mikaleth boss. I don't have words for that. I can see how uh, Soulsborne players might have a difficult time with this considering the fact that a lot of the bosses are a lot more intimidating <laughs> than they actually are. Because let's face it, every Soulsborne game, every boss that is in every Soulsborne game is easy once you practice it and get the move sets down. We all know this, but for some reason, we let our emotions get very attached to the game and to the boss. And since it is a very emotional experience playing a video game, we let that rule our entire experience rather than going in logically. And it might sound silly, but it's what I've noticed when playing a lot of these games. Even when I get into Dark Souls 3, I get so invested and so just emotionally in, in, in here, like in this entire game area that I just kind of just don't go with things logically. The, the logic just goes out the window. Now this is where things are gonna get a little bit theological. So hang tight with me. You're gonna make it through this section, I promise. Now the creation of man is the creation of life itself. As we can see right over here, uh, the creation of Adam by Michelangelo, we see that God is not touching Adam. He's, he's, it's only like there's a separation there between the fingers a little bit. Adam is waiting for the gift of life from God. Now this is kind of funny to me considering the fact that I am an atheist discussing this, but I feel religion and I feel that history about religion. I feel like theological concepts, it's very fascinating still to me, even though that I completely deny the existence of God. I don't deny the uh, the historicity of it. I don't deny the fact that it is educational to learn about this. Now, when you look at this painting from Michelangelo, you see that there's a gap between the fingers. This could represent a separation from man and God. Now, this could also be the same representation of this holy aspect in Elden Ring when they discuss the fingers. The fingers technically represent creation. That's why I said, remember the beginning of the article I said, the fingers, aka creation, it's the same thing, same concept here of where you have the fingers representing creation, where the finger is acting as a creation point to do something next. What's your next move going to be? While the character still has the free will to do what they please, they seek guidance of the fingers the same way religion acts as a point of guidance for many people. We could also look at it from a psychological perspective as in this picture, you see two different halves representing the right and left hemisphere of the brain. God being the right, Adam, life's creation being the left. What Whatever the young tarnish decided to do in this game through our action and through our creation uh it has opportunities for both good bad or indifferent same thing in real life too you know whatever you decide to do it could be good bad or indifferent Elden Ring holds a special place in my heart, from the stunning visuals to intricate main story bosses to several places you can visit from multiple dungeons and mini bosses to exquisite landscapes that sprawl and go on forever. The concept, the emotions evoked in the Easter eggs from Soulsborne's game previous, it's no wonder that the game is a masterpiece. I feel like it's the best of all of From Software's games put into one universe that approaches the games from a standpoint that knows its players well, and for newer fans that want a more beginner friendly approach because this game honestly is way more beginner friendly than the first dark souls games or you know even bloodborne dare i say it it's way more beginner friendly because you start off in this open world landscape 
that's just absolutely stunning and there's no real grind or hustle that you got to do to level up there's none of that you you it's very organic it's very natural it's very much like oh you go here and you go here and there's so much opportunity to grow and level up and be characters and do side quests it, it, it's absolutely incredible but you guys that was my review on Elden Ring I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys like my face and what I do please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday but stay casually nerdy you guys and i will see you all in the next video bye